So bias to make prediction, our model will analyze our data and find patterns in it. Okay. Using these patterns, we can make generalization about uh, certain instances in our data. Our model after training learns this pattern and applies them to the rest uh, of the test set to predict them. And that's how we get the evaluation of our model. Now, bias is the difference between our actual and predicted values. Bias is the simple assumptions that our model make about our data to be able to predict new data. So if this graph uh, tells us about our data, so this is our actual data. So if you say, let me change out the color. So if this brown color line is our actual values and this line is our model predictions then what we have in between them this is known as our bias term okay so this one is our uh, model predictions these are the predictions and this line the brown line is eventually our actual values So the difference between these two are known as bias. So when the bias is high, the assumptions made by our model are too basic. The model can't capture important features of our data. This means that uh, our model hasn't captured uh, patterns in the training data and hence cannot perform well on the testing data too. So we have high error rate for both of this. So for uh, bias the training uh, cost function okay so for j train j train we will be having the error rate j train is nothing but the error rate will be will be high okay so when we have a very much high bias okay so this is known as underfitting of data let's look into what we mean by variance so variance is the very opposite of bias. During training, it allows our model to see the data a certain number of times to find patterns in it. If it does not work on the data for long enough, it will not find patterns and bias occurs. On the other hand, if our model is allowed to view the data too many times, it will learn very well for only that data. It will capture most patterns in the data, but it will also learn from the unnecessary data present too. So it makes our model an overfit. Okay. What I mean by overfit is our model, when it has high variance, it will uh, produce very low uh, error rate. So the J train, okay. So the J train uh, will be very low. Okay, because it is getting overfitting, we are getting high variance. We can define variance as the model's sensitivity to fluctuation in the data. Our model may learn from noise. This will cause our model to consider tribal feature as much more important. So let's say we have our data something like this. Okay. Now, if I train our model and if our model has high variance, so the model that will be trained will be something like this. Oops. Okay, so that's how our data might be trained in our. So you can see this is for the training set. This is for the training set. And for the test set, if we have the same line, so this is our model, this is where our hypothesis stands out. Okay, this is our hypothesis. And let's say this is our model. Okay, and for the test examples, if our test example lies somewhere between over here okay, or here, so you can see the model is a very bad fit for our test case. So for training, it uh, the error rate is very low, but for test, it is having very high error rate. So if our model does good in the training set, 
and very bad in the test set, then we can say the problem is of high variance. That is how we can evaluate our model. Now let's look into a high bias and a high variance problem. And let's compare with, with a very fit, uh, just what exactly we mean. So this is an example of high bias, high variance and the correct model that we need. So the left hand side, what we can see that uh, this is our model. Okay, we have two different classes over here. So one is for this, uh, the circle class and one is for the X class. And if we have to define for this a straight line or a model for this, a hypothesis line for this, if we brought a very straight line, you can see that this is not a quite a good fit for this. And for high variance, if we check, the model does overly good. So this is high variance problem where it is highly uh, affected with our model. Okay, so this is also not a very good fit, but what we have in the center is the best fit for our model. So this line separates the crosses with the circle. So any new value which comes into play, if it lies inside the circle, this is the, the blue line, it is or it will be a very good uh, fit for the model and it will give me the almost the correct value if the value lies inside the circle let's say we have a new value so let's say we have a new value and inside the new value if uh, purple is my new value and if i get a value over here some point over here let's say this point over here it will tell me that this belongs to the circle class and if some value lies over here it will tell me that it belongs to the x class that is what we mean by high bias high variance and just write what we need in the between so let's look into the bullseye bullseye this is known as the bullseye diagram bullseye diagram and over here we can just analyze what kind of problem we are facing in. so we have low bias low variance this is what the optimal case is and this is what we need for our model always to be so we need low bias okay so and the center one what we have in this between is known as the true so let's say this is the true the inner circle is the true and that is where our model should be lying out and should be predicting it out so if the model is low bias and low variance it will give me the best fit but if the model is low bias and high variance so you can see that even though it lies in the between because of it is low bias, but it is variating a lot from our uh, actual data, okay, the point that we need. Again, if the data is highly biased, but the variance is low. So all the points that we have lie over here, but it is far away from the truth. Okay, this is the bias point. So it is far away from the truth value. So where it should be lying and if the model is high biased and high variate, so it is just giving me some fancy value. It is far away from the uh, truth. Okay, This is far away from the truth and it is also variating a lot. So that is what we know uh, by high bias and high variance. Let's look into the mathematical aspect of this. So we know, let's say the variable we are trying to predict as y. So this is the variable that we need to predict, which is a function of x. Okay, so basically it's a function of x. If you could just recall from the formula that we learned from linear regression, y equals to fx. And then we will be having an error rate that is e, where e is the error term and it is normally distributed with a mean of zero. Now we'll make a model, okay, which will be Okay, this is for the actual function and now we will be building a model which will be y dash fx of fx using linear regression or any other modeling technique whichever you are comfortable with. Now the error rate, okay, what we are talking about j or let's take the value e over here, e of x will be somewhat like this. That is the real value minus what we get from the predicted one. So real by predicted. This is the error that we will be getting and this is exactly the error rate that we have discussed while we were learning about linear regression. Now, error of x. Let's take this chain. This is the 
cost function sorry cost function okay uh, now the error rate let's say the error rate or okay, error of x it will be pi square plus variance plus we have the irreducible error irreducible error so that is where we can get the error term by this and this is actually what our model should be now if we just open it out so it should be looking somewhat like this j of we have x minus f of x square then let's say j of f of x minus j of f of x square and the error rate the reduce, uh, irreducible error can be just defined by this so this is what gives me the actual value of my error rate. Irreducible error is the error that cannot be reduced by creating good model. 